Now, I want to keep the pressing and the cleaning conversation going, Russ, because aside from our friendship it's developing because of you selling me comics and then me selling you comics and us getting collections and then us starting a show and all this stuff. We also have bonded because of comic book cleaning and pressing. This is something that you taught a lot of the stuff to me. And then I would learn from a lot of other experts, but mm -hmm. it's something we both do all the time. And it's something I don't think we'll ever stop doing. What do you think? Oh, absolutely not. I mean, this is one of those things that, um, for me to be able to get a book and look at it and go, can I make this better? Even if it's something as simple as it's got a water damage, it's got a crinkle, it's got pencil writing happens all the time. You know, I mean, it, it, it's pretty, pretty common that you get a book that someone has written their name on or in and even just going, all right. What type of eraser do I use? And how do I do this to make this get the pencil writing? Just to, not even to like sell it and make more money, but just, you know, improve eye appeal for my own personal collection. Absolutely. You know, the golden age guru, Jeff, he's a really talented artist. I think a lot of people may be surprised how good he is. He's like trained classically on yeah. some things. Um, I'm not an artist. I've tried. I've <laughs> dabbled. It's not my thing. I don't enjoy it as much as some individuals do. And because of that lack of passion, I know that I can't really go the distance with it. But I feel like this may be my closest to artistry when it comes to, you know, the artwork of comic books, which is fixing the paper, you know, knowing what to steam, how to do um, the, the repair job, to do it in a way where you're not as you said, added things to it to get a restoration label, right. uh, a restored label rather. Um, but also just being able to help my homies when they have a book that they can't figure out how to fix, you know, just right. There are times where there is a book that I've had from you or guru or a friend that you're just fed up with and you know you can fix it, but you're like four or five presses in and you're like, I don't even want to see this book anymore. Nope, I'm done with this And you book. hand it over to me and say, just give it a shot. You right. Know? I've done that with John Hill as well. Yeah. Uh. You know? <laughs> it's one of those things. Um, and also when you are getting into pressing and cleaning and that becomes part of the vocabulary, you know, you, you, you can hold a conversation with someone else who does that because you do it often. Right. It's a whole layer. It's like a subcategory of the collectible hobby. You can talk all day long with me about Silver Age comics. And then we can have a completely separate conversation, same length, about fixing Silver right. Age comics. And that's how it is for a lot of cleaners and pressers. We know a lot of experts over the years. And I'm, there's, there's one who's been on the show even. And we'll have conversations amongst us three. And he's breaking down how he's using these random new tools that he has discovered to overcome problems in comics that we would have never thought could be fixed. Well, the biggest thing about this, I mean, without going too far into it, this is a daunting process and people can talk and talk and talk. But really, if you want to get into pressing, if you really want to do it, go and buy a press. Start. The only way to get any better is practice. Keep in mind that you're probably going to mess up 20% or more of your books in the very beginning. You're going to press them too hot. You're going to press them too cold. You're going to steam them too much. You're going to steam them too little. You're going to rip the cover. I mean, it just happens. Be prepared to have a nice stack of books that you're willing to mess up before you go after your Avengers number four. Looking at you, Jeff. I actually explained <laughs> to Ryan on the mic what a comic booger was. <gasps> okay. Because Hero Restoration showcased a book that had been pressed by someone else or rather laid flat on a comic booger and caused an indent on the top pages. And it's something you have to do. So you have to go through each page by page and make sure there's nothing on there because you can make a problem much worse. I, I go through pad every single book on the cover, the front, and the back. And if you feel any bumps, you have to go through, find out what page a that dog little... Ear, it is. You have to find where that is and remove it because if you press it, you will make it a tougher press job if you didn't take the time to rub the outside and just make sure you get all those little pieces of lint, dirt, hair, whatever boogers off. So one of the things that I have recommended to a lot of individuals who have asked me, 
it's it's recommendations of how to get good at something, whether it's buying, selling, repairing comics, growing your Instagram. I mean, the, the requests are, are sure. endless. And I try to help out, you know, follow me at Comic Tom 101 on Instagram. I try to respond to everybody within a week. Um, but there is one go-to thing that I have recommended, and they were both advice, you know, the tidbits of advice that you have bestowed to me. <laughs> whether you thought of it as a sensei act or not, that's what it ended up being. The first, which we kind of mentioned in this podcast, was knowing your price guide. Mm -hmm. Before Key Collector, it was a lot harder. Right. But there was a point where you, you know, sold me an overstreet. Yeah. And you said, you want to know comics? Learn this. Yeah. And there were months where I would be in my apartment, chilling with the people that I was living with at the time, while they were doing things, a lot funner things than I was doing to them. I was enjoying it. Right. And I would sit on the couch and read the overstreet price guide. Mm hmm. And I would legit, it's like reading a damn dictionary, right. you know, tiny text you're going through. And you told me, you got to know your price guide, know your X-Men, know your Spider-Man, right. know your Batman. As soon as you know that, learn them better. And then keep adding to that. Know your detective comics, you know, mm -hmm. know your Superman. There's a lot of books that aren't worth much. And fortunately with Key Collector, it, it scrubs that for you. So you only know the important ones. But back then you had to know them based off of the, the, the overstreet right. and the overstreet wasn't even hundred percent accurate at the time. Mm -hmm. Right. So there's always things that you had to learn beyond that. So overstreet, know your price guide, download your key collector, you know, like know your key books at least right. you'll get dangerous. So that's the first recommendation that you, that you really laid out to me. It was one of the first things you told me, you handed me the book and you said, know this stuff. By the end of that year, I would have tabs that I would make for my own overstreet. Oh, yeah. oh, this is where ASM is. And I would go to my tab and I would have notes Pages were freaking falling out of that mm -hmm. thing. I get my spiral bounds just because I knew how easy it was to tear them out the next time. Yep. You know, so, you know, oh, where's my X-Men? I have X-Men over there and I have it in the book. I have uh, these 20 pages of loose paper that were all, you know, mm -hmm. taped together because I just, I needed to have a portable one and I needed to have my book. So know your price guide, know your key books. That was the first recommendation. And I appreciate you providing that. The second time was about pressing. And you said it, you're going to mess up a lot of books. Yep. You're going to need to press different kinds of books, different mistakes. There's not an answer for every press you do, every mistake you fix. You have to kind of go through your Rolodex of opportunities you had, things that you tried, your experiments, and go, you know what? The last time I messed with a Silver Age book from this time frame that had a similar defect like this, it worked doing these types of things, right? Do you remember when you gave me my first press? Because you had upgraded yes. what you gave me to accompany that press. Mm -hmm. A full long box of water damaged Practice fungi. On these. Yeah. Just this, Nick this is awful. Fury. Oh, yeah. Beautiful, mm -hmm. beautiful key books that were so gross. Yeah, they, they all had a weird, awful, stainy ring on them. Yep. And you said, press all of these. I don't <laughs> care what happens. Right. Learn it. Yep. And dude, it was one after the other. You gave me even the uh, parchment paper to use. Right. And that's what I did for months. And I would take them back to you and you go, yeah, you know, I think this is the best it could be. Right. But you would also point out, oh, I mean, I think this one's a little too hot because it's uh, the, the paper. It doesn't, you need to get a steamer. Okay. Right. Let's, let's get you some steam. Yep. Let's revive the, the, the paper a little bit. So both of those things were major moments in my comic grind of getting better at certain aspects that I feel like I'm a damn professional now doing. But you said it right. You got to put the time in. You got to practice. Because if that's what I had to do, and you were kind of just laying it out for me, you, you, you said, here, here's the Overstreet. Learn it. And I'm like, I don't, okay, I'm going to learn that. Here's a long box of Silver Age. Fix them. Right. Most people don't have that opportunity happen. So I'm assuming the way you figured it out was well, how most people had to figure it out because they didn't have a sensei. You figured it out the hard way. I made a lot of mistakes. And, and before then, if you remember before I even opened the store, I used to go to every single Goodwill, every single half price books and buy whatever books I thought I could sell for more. And a lot of those books, especially at half price books, had price stickers on the front. So before I on even the comic started themselves. pressing, yes, like literally on the comic itself. So before I even started pressing, I got really, really good with a razor blade and some naphtha 
or some goo gone or some like light you know, fluid. rubbing alcohol. Like everyone has a different thing that they do to remove the sticky from the labels. And I removed thousands and thousands of stickers from covers and you get it wet and you wait and you scrape it. And sometimes the ink comes off the cover and sometimes it doesn't. And the number of times that I had something like a Hellboy wild hunt, number one, you're like, I can sell this for 25 bucks and you scrape off the price tag and you go price tags. Damn. And you just worth nothing. And you throw the book away. Yeah. You know, dollar bin, quarter bin book. Totally. Um, So, so comic fam, if there's one thing to, to uh, bestow, Something to to give you as far as my advice of my experience with this guy is that there's a lot of LCS owners who have this kind of knowledge just sitting there, just sitting there, man. And they don't, they don't tell this to people a lot. And the only way that you can really uncover this information and get your, your sensei per se is to go to your LCSs to network and and to spread that comic karma. I'm sure there's a lot of people at your that that frequent Milgi Comics that that call Milgi Comics their LCS that have learned a hell of a lot from you. Mm-hmm. And all it took was them picking up their damn comic books on time. Oh yes. <laughs> right? Pick up your comic books and if you want a longer conversation like I said, just bring me a latte. <laughs> you know, we can sit down, pick my brain. I'll, I mean, I'll answer questions. Most people get this idea of a comic book curmudgeon, someone in the back room shaking their fist at them. No, most of us are really, really accessible. And all of the guys that I've been talking to over the 35 years I've been collecting in Seattle, I have relationships with almost all of the shop owners that I've been shopping at since, again, the late 80s, early 90s. And a lot of these guys are still in the game and they're still doing what they're doing. And yes, these are the relationships that we forge now and they carry us into the future. Yeah, and they're friends from way back when, 20, 30 years ago, and now they're 20 to 30 years more dangerous. Right. Sharper, <laughs> better at every part of this comic game that we're in. The book has hit 20 bucks. Let off the gas, comic fan, unless you're really gutting for some jack for the goodness. $75 cover price on this, don't overbid. But if somebody wants it, we got it. 